When I was just a little boy, my daddy told me, son, you're only bound for trouble, all you think about is fun. I said, success is in the plow blade, and I hope you'll understand. I said, my hands don't fit the plow, I'm going to be a mountain man. This is a mountain man rendezvous. Uh, Pre-1840, we have a lot of trade spots. We have people that do the shooting competitions, hawk and knives. We have primitive bow. We have Dutch oven cook-offs. Uh, basically, this is the first rendezvous of the year, the Easter rendezvous. So everybody's really excited to get out and just see everybody that they haven't seen since last fall and hopefully nobody's gone under. We started in 1987. Uh, we started out with maybe a half a dozen teepees and half a dozen trailers out in the parking lots and maybe 20 or 30 day shooters here. Uh, and this rendezvous has just continued to grow year after year and it's becoming one of the biggest events, uh, biggest rendezvous now in the state of Utah. It was a fort back, you know, years and years and years ago. So they decided to have what we call the rendezvous and the rendezvous is basically uh, reenacting back in the 1800s when the mountain men and Indians got together and, and traded all their goods, got what they needed from one to the other and went on their merry ways. There's a lot of big parties back then and there's still a lot of parties here. At 17 I headed west out across the Great Divide Just a boy I traveled out across the prairie wide I longed to be a trapper and to live the trapper's dream To make my home the mountains and to see the great unseen The fort is a reconstruction that was built on the original site of the fort built by Miles Goodyear in about 1845 and 1846 and that's the exact size and location of the original fort. It was built to be a trading post for the new quick route to California called the Hastings Cutoff. It was supposed to come right down Weber Canyon around the Great Salt Lake and straight on to California instead of going up into southern Idaho where the, the California Oregon Trail went. I'm gonna rope and tie the winter wind, make the mountains smile. Um, I'm two feathers. I usually have two feathers in my hair, but uh, I forgot them <laughs> this trip, so. Yeah, no feathers. They can just call me no feathers. Everybody has a different, you know, name. They usually get named something they do, some accident or something funny or what you wear, you know, I'll just depend. They call me root beer man for, for obvious reasons. Go for, go for this, go for that. Indian chief, everybody knows me by that. If you're looking for a mountain man name, I don't have one yet. I haven't done anything stupid enough to get one, so. Basically, I don't consider myself a mountain man. I'm a colonial. Well, tell him what Ed calls you. What does he call me now? <laughs> We have a lot of primitive uh, groups. We have the Revolutionary War guys. Uh, we have the fur trader guys that try and do the reenactments uh, correctly. Everything's sewn correctly or reproduced correctly. I'd actually be portraying an individual that lives in Kentucky in about uh, eight, in about 17, early 1790s. So I wouldn't be here. This place wouldn't exist yet. Mountain men were out here trapping beaver and uh, it was too much trouble for all the mountain men to go back east to St. Louis with their pelts and so Senator, several enterprising gentlemen organized the rendezvous and they would choose one location in the west to, uh, uh, for everybody to meet during the summer, bring their pelts there and they would bring all the trade goods out with them. They'd bring rifles and black powder and lead and coffee and beans and the things that the mountains men needed and of course they'd bring plenty of alcohol. Um, and so this is the politically correct version of the alcohol trade that occurred during the rendezvous. My husband, he likes to, to sell the guns in the bags. We like to sell buffalo stuff. That seems to be really popular. We have carpet bags. This is a cape dress here. Another one with different buttons. These are deer horn buttons. And then we have just different, all kinds of different styles. A lot of women like to do their own sewing because it makes it more affordable. Like I would not be able to afford something, I would make it myself. And so I have a lot of sewing stuff here, beeswax for waterproofing, 
uh, this is deer sinew. If you're really going to be authentic, you're going to break that down and you're going to actually sew with sinew. We make all our leathers by hand. They're all hand punched, hand sewn, hand fringed. It's more or less what we're noted for now is how we build everything in the variety of colors and in the dress styles and everything where it's all done by hand. We have dresses that I've made and hand dyed the wool. I even have a a buffalo coat here I made for myself that's got, again, it's got the linen lined. It's got the brain tan, which is the old-fashioned way. And then the reason why it's brown is it's been smoked in a teepee. And what the smoking does, it, it actually makes it waterproof. Because if it's brain tanned and it gets wet, it turns back into rawhide. When we first started, we just had a little small rack. And we started make, I started making these. The first one I made, we were in Teton Village and it snowed. My husband sold it right off my back. So, but this is what we first started with, just the capes. A lot of the stuff out here in front from basically for the kids to enjoy different beads and pouches and necklaces and medicine pouches, different things that the kids really like and enjoy. We even have some of these these are actual reproductions of lead bars so that the, the trappers, they needed lead. That was one of the most uh, important commodities was to have these sticks of lead that they would actually melt and make balls for their smooth bores that they were issued by the fur trade companies. Most of the stuff up behind me is all, uh, well, probably 80% of it I make. A lot of it for decorations for homes, authentic, you know, pieces from the past. There's laughter in the hills when we meet at rendezvous. Goods are bought with beaver skins and when the trade is through, we'd sing rendezvous, rendezvous, lift your bottles high. We'll dance a jig to rendezvous until the day we die. We test our shooting skills and throw our hops and knives we drown. We're just out shooting, throw some lead at the hill and have some fun with that. It's been one of my better days shooting today, so. There is laughter in the hills when we meet at rendezvous. We've got two different competitions going. They've got one where you're uh, competing for a rifle. There were certain targets that they used for the rifle. Every target has some kind of prize that goes with it. The big prize is a rifle. It's a flintlock rifle. A uh, nice looking thing, but I'm not good enough to be shooting for that, so. I'm getting ready for a hawk and knife competition. Sometimes you can win a hundred dollars or something, if you win. It's got a pretty new handle, an old blade. I've had it for quite a while. Uh, it's not real sharp, but I can throw it good. Um, it's just a hawk. If you're a woman, you can even throw frying pans at your husband. That's the funnest one. I've done that a few times. Chief's still, Chief's still walking, so he's okay. This has hawk and knives for kids. They do um, bow and arrows, they can shoot. Uh, we can go, we do canoe races. They do an Easter egg hunt. It's geared towards the family and it, it just gets them away from the computers and the TVs and they just kind of get back to nature. That's why we started it. We love to be at the rendezvous, and it's a it's a good way to be here, and and uh, a lot of people like it, and so it's a, it's a fun business. Yeah, my grandson here, they've all they all like to come and enjoy. They throw hawks and knives. That's what I'm doing now, sharpening sharpen their knives, getting ready for the competition this afternoon. I enjoy it. My daughter was raised in it, and and it's just really family oriented, and and. Just really, just enjoy the people, you know, it's just like one big happy family. I'm not sure where I was, I've never found a place again. It was a ring around the 
moon that night in the gulf of the canyon's rim. A sickness hit me bad that day as across the cold heart's rim. My stomach started knocking up, my head began to spin. Just before my mind went blank, my eyes were seeing too. The moon was rising in the sky and I thought the life was through. I awoke near a fire and shadow across the night. That very night that are far to put in words Fires flying through the sky White buffalo and birds oh. When I woke I realized the dream is what occurred I never saw the spirit His voice I never heard I saddled up my ponies and I went to check my traps. My bed's tightened up since I stopped dead in my tracks. For there were herbs upon the ground, eagle feathers in a tree. Footprints from some oxen that were not made by me. 